The In It Together with Lori Lynn Green talk show is a positive way to start your day. Ready for some encouragement? Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. Let's let the healing begin. Come be inspired. Hear moving stories. Even laugh out loud. <laughs> Can't make heads or tails of what I'm saying. <laughs> Just incomprehensible. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. You'll hear real people doing real things to make a real impact. You are heroes every day. Hear honest, compassionate, engaging issues you care about. You see people come together to do good in our community. And the more we come together, the more good we can do. Listen in and get started on redesigning your life. And hear what's positive in Greater Manchester. Here's your happy host, Lori Lynn Green. Good morning, friends in Greater Manchester. Welcome to In It Together. We are so glad that you tuned in. If you'd like to find us on the web, you can go to inittogether.net. Listen live, watch our previous shows, even link to our Facebook and Twitter. And if you like and follow us, you'll see that we are bringing out the best in people to influence positive change in this community and beyond. You can also go to LinkedIn and YouTube. I almost forgot about that. Uh, today is It's a Wonderful Life with Mark Major. Soon we'll be dominating the world on all these. We will. YouTube. So what's today's yeah, topic? We're talking about communicating versus dictating. Oh, communicating versus dictating. We'll be back right after this. For you leaders out there, stay tuned. Mark Major knows that great coaches need constant training to be effective. As a certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, Mark can help you identify and activate your personal and professional goals. If you seek to do more and be more, look up Mark on the web at johnmaxwellgroup.com slash M-A-R-C major or call 603-674-6818. Mark Major, growing leaders and adding value. Morgan Self Storage has been serving Manchester and Salem, New Hampshire for over 15 years. Facilities are heated with security and video surveillance in well-lit hallways, easy access loading, and high-capacity elevators. With many sized units, portable trailers, and boxes for moving, we can meet your residential or business storage needs. 400 Bedford Street in Manchester or 8 Willow Street in Salem. Visit morganstorage.com or call us at 603-623-2000. Morgan Self Storage, making self storage secure, safe, and easy. Hi, this is Lori Lynn Green, Advancement Strategist and Coach Trainer at AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com. Join me Mondays at 9 a.m., where I'll talk about ways to help keep you moving forward in life. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. Welcome back to In It Together, kicking off It's a Wonderful Life with Coach Speaker, Executive Dec Director of the John Maxwell team here locally. You almost said Executive Dictator, but we're, we're trying to <laughs> avoid that today, right? We are <laughs> trying to avoid that. So first yeah. off, we always want to welcome our internet radio and live streamers. Uh, thank you for tuning in this morning. We are here to, uh, this, is, this is all about leadership development. And live in a positive lifestyle. Absolutely. On on today's program, and Mark, as executive director, coach, speaker, has had various um, opportunities to do mm -hmm. this in in many people's lives. He's got a history of management in uh, retail and other things, sales, sales, radio, Red Cross for several years. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of experience. So. You know, one of my one of my dreams as I was wrapping up my so-called nine to five career is that I want to take everything that I've learned over the years and sometimes a lot of hard lessons along the way. But I want to right. pay that forward and help people to grow and develop. And I always say if, if I especially younger people just coming up, if, I always say if I can help someone avoid all the landmines I had to step on from the time I started my you career to the landmines? time I was 30. <laughs> seriously. Um you know, I, I'd love to help people do that. So right. just from experience and, you know, we all go through the same stuff, basically. Right. 
it, it just really comes down to, you know, a lot of it's perspective, but it, you know, there's, there's only so much that you can do in book learning. Exactly. It, it, it's experience. Yeah. It, it, the book learning is important. Okay. So mm -hmm. that you can, but I think a lot of times the book learning actually helps us to, to understand what we've already done and what right. where, where it fits. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, for several years, uh, I was invited into uh, a professor's class in the springtime to, to work with one of their economics uh, classes. And I always used to have him, uh, you know, give me the book so I can see where you guys are at so I can address some of those things. Right. And whenever I started the class, I would just come out and, and honestly say, okay, this is what the book says. Now I'm going to teach you about the real world. <laughs> uh, it's funny you said I was just talking to a client uh, the other day. I was meeting with a client who isn't he, he's on his road to be an amazing author, mm -hmm. a fantasy author. Um, you know, all his professors told him how, how amazing he is. They've they've uh, uh, nominated him to go and represent their, you know, writing mm -hmm. department and things like that. He's just brilliant when just it comes really to that. Good. Right. But in our conversation, what I ended up talking to him about with the real life thing was uh, because I do a lot of writing myself was, um, and this is, I don't know if my writing coach is on here, but a great guy owns worldwide publishing group shared with me one day, uh, probably more than one day. He's probably said this a thousand times. If he said it once is that, uh, your, your conversation voice uh, you you learn everything in school to how to write as a scholarly writer, mm -hmm. you know, with all the, um, you know, when you're when you usually it's scholarly writing right. based on facts and things like this. And you have to, you know, give your uh, all of your resources and things like that. And you, you mm -hmm. speak in a more like you're doing a collegiate term paper <laughs> way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. But when it, when you're trying to reach people in a convert you know in a in a story in a conversation yeah. it's a little it's a lot different and that's something i know about from the years well, that i've you been know, communicating that, that's one of the things when it comes to speaking or doing anything coaching uh and i've actually had conversations with john maxwell on this as, as well as listening to him from stage talk about this the best thing when you're writing or you're speaking is share a lot of personal stories because those mm -hmm. examples are what really uh make the point right if you look at one of his 40-minute keynotes, he probably only touches on two or three points, but he uses a lot of illustrations to get the points right. across. Um, you know, it's not a matter of how great am I doing in my speech today? It's you want to make sure that you're connecting with people. And, um, you know, on that subject, that's kind of what we're talking about today, too, when it comes to leadership in, in your business and whatever else you're right. doing. It's communicating versus dictating. I love this quote by Dwight Eisenhower, our former five-star general and president of the United States. He says, you don't lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault, not leadership. <laughs> and it's true, but you know what? A lot of times people's upbringing and what they're exposed to uh, is what they know, and when they get into leadership positions, for example, when I was growing up, and I love my dad, he is a great guy, he was a service guy, he was an Air Force guy, a National Guard guy, so when dad said he gave you an order, you did the order. You, you didn't, didn't say you didn't, why. You, you didn't question, you didn't yeah. say how, you just said how high, and that was it. That's and, exactly right. You know, so that's what I was exposed to, mm -hmm. and it took me a while to learn that you don't lead people that way you have to communicate or else right. people won't people don't want to be led that way they'll do what you tell them to only be, if they have to not because they want to follow and you and chances are you won't get the best out of them either or you won't allow them to to grow in a way where they can begin to think for themselves and in right. in the military okay that's a different thing you're not supposed to think for yourself you're supposed to let let your sergeant think for you because he's there to save your life and that's the exactly reason. yeah so but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily work in the corporate world or the church world or does not. family you know the best way to do is is to connect with people right and um you know the best way to connect with people is ask about them ask questions, find out about, you know, what they love, what their, right. what their hot buttons are. Um, and that way there, they'll know that you value them as people, not just as employees. Uh, and, you know, a perfect example, and I think I might have mentioned this maybe a couple of years ago when we first started on the year. 
Uh, when I worked at um, Rite Aid, my boss used to send me into stores that weren't performing well. Right. And um, one store in particular, uh, the, the two previous managers that had been there treated their employees terribly. Right. And so, you know, no, everybody was in a bad mood coming in and that rubbed off on the customers and so forth. So one of the first things that I did when I took over that store was basically sat down with everybody and got to know them on a personal level. Did they have kids? What do they like to do, et cetera? And also, what do they like to do as far as uh, their jobs in the store? Right. And I'm going to hit something really hard right now, and I think people really need to write this down. By getting to know people and getting to know what they like to do, it gives you an opportunity to find out what they're best at, what their best skills are, and to put them in a place in your organization that will give them the opportunity to perform at their best. Yeah. In other words, you're not just plugging in somebody to fill a job. You're taking a job and finding the right person to fill that job. A, that job's going to get done better, and B, that person's going to be happy in their job. And your retention rate, you're not going to be turning people over all the time. If you have people that are happy coming in, doing what they're doing, and they're performing well, and you're letting them know they're performing well, you're going to have very little turnover, and you're going to have a, a great, great uh, job atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it also comes down to when you, when you take the time to do that. Like you said, some people don't know whether they're addicted or not. And honestly, some people just don't care. Right. I pay you, you do what I say, you're my slave. That's kind of how people have a mentality. Mm -hmm. But the reality is if you really want to get the most <laughs> out of your people, right? like what Mark was saying, instead of instilling a fear in them, that, that really stifles creativity. It stifles performance. Mm -hmm. if, if people are afraid every day they come into work that they're going to lose their job or they're, or they're always worried about not performing well enough. Um, they're not going to look forward to coming in. And they'll probably eventually find something else. And to do. that <laughs> leads to a lot of absenteeism and people calling in sick, et cetera. And, uh, it you creates know, stress. It, it's stress on everybody. I think a good leader is someone who can alleviate stress on people. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you don't have expectations, but communicate in a way where mm -hmm. you, you can talk together about, okay, how would you approach this? This is what we've done so far. Right. Eventually, you'll find your own rhythm. Mm -hmm. But for now, start here. And then until you find your rhythm, start right. here. But then as you make changes and, and I see that you're doing well, I want to know what you're doing so that I can duplicate it somewhere else. Exactly. Um, I was listening to a great podcast yesterday. Um, I have access to a lot of different podcasts that John Maxwell does when he interviews uh, top leaders from different industries. And uh, in this podcast, he was he was interviewing. uh Hort, Hort, yeah, Horst, Horst Schultze. He was the mm -hmm. CEO of the Ritz Carlton Hotel chain for several years. And he was talking about this whole process starts with the hiring. And they set standards for how they were going to treat customers, you know, the atmosphere they wanted to create in their hotels, etc. And so when they came to interviewing people, they let them know right then and there, this is our culture here. This is what we do. This is what we believe in. And if that's not something that you're comfortable with or you're going to be happy with, then we don't need to continue this conversation because, mm -hmm. A, you're not going to be happy here, and, B, we're really not going to be happy with your performance. So yeah. let's just end the conversation right now. I think this is really important that you're bringing this out. Culture is so important. Another way to put that is – what kind of an environment are you mm -hmm. creating? And the leader is the one who is responsible for the for the environment. Right. In other words, if if the leader goes in and should be able to assess where the weakest links are, where right. the people have attitude adjustments, because that it's always that one negative person that'll spoil it for all the other people. Right. So you have to be the one to identify it. Find out what's going on. And again, Mark and I say, you know, start off with the graciousness with people. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the guy's mother just died. <laughs> right, exactly. You don't know what's going on. Maybe they're trying to do everything and they're overwhelmed. Maybe they're, you know, dealing with a, you right. know, a spouse that's sick or mm -hmm. things like that. And, and 
And that way you can give Seth have some compassion and assessment, lighten their load a little bit right now while they're going through something or, right. or, um, yeah, do do what you can, and then you know what they're going to remember that. And when they come back strong, they're going to give you everything they have. Exactly, because you tr- you treated them well. You know, one of the other things that he brought up, and he and he was mentioning, he almost hated to be to have to bring this up, but he said, you know, our college system, our education system, is not really teaching people, especially coming out of school these days, what it takes to really perform well on their job. They're teaching them a lot of facts and figures, but they don't really teach them about the real world. And I and I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, I actually think that we're turning more toward um, more hands on stuff. I mean, if you've ever watched Mike Rowe, I love Mike Rowe. He's he's a blue collar guy. Uh, America really is made up of more blue collar people mm-hmm. than than anyone. The service industry. My husband was in the service industry for over 40 years, Mm -hmm. Uh, very, very talented, troubleshooting problems, uh, really excellent at what he did. Everybody knew and everybody could call him. And even to this day, if you've never seen anything, he knows the process of how to get the answer. Right. And so when you, when you think about that, uh, this is hands-on stuff. So Mm -hmm. I think they're turning more into technical training schools and things Mm -hmm. like that. I think that's what high schools should look like now. It should be almost like going into college which areas would you like to explore? Right. I think that's how it started off. Which areas would you like to explore? Now they've taken shop classes out. They've taken cooking classes out. They've, you know, a lot of, they've taken a lot of these. I remember when I, out. yeah, I remember when I started high school mm-hmm. way back in 1970. Yeah. There was basically two tracks. They had what they called college course. If you wanted to go to college and then they had the other track i forget what they called it but it was basically if you wanted to learn auto mechanic or shop or do that exactly. type of stuff so that yeah. you didn't waste time taking subjects that were of no value to what your interests mm-hmm. were they you were on a track to succeed um one of the other things that they really need to teach uh, and, and this is vital, you know, in practically every show that we do, every subject that comes up, it all comes down to people skills, doesn't it? Right. It does. It comes down to people skills. And a lot of people don't have people skills. Well, and this is, and, it, it, because they yes. haven't learned. I mean, when I when I grew up, you know, it was you have you have respect your elders. It's Mr. This or Mrs. That or Thank you and please and ma- just basic manners, right? It's simple. That, it's interesting that you say this. Um, I, of course, I've been in personal development for oh boy, almost thirty years now. I feel like an old person um, since you were five. Yeah, I have been for many years, and so my kids have always been very good with mm-hmm. people. They're good. They have excellent people skills, not just manners. They're able to read people. Mm-hmm. Able to, so I, I some of them had, had gone to school with people who are very, very, what I call book smart. Right. Very, very book smart. They, they, they'd always be like on honors classes. They'd get all the straight A's. And my mm-hmm. kids may be, maybe a B or something. They right. may, may not be in the honors. But what was interesting is uh, one of my sons in school had friend, was friends with one of these honors kids. Right. And whenever they would go to do things, that kid relied heavily on my son right. f- for how to interact with people. Right, exactly. Because he didn't really know how to do that. So what we've learned is that it doesn't matter how much you know if you're not able to communicate and relate with people in a way for them to know what that is. Right, right. I always, t- I always tell people if you want to be able to do that, uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I mean, that should be a basic book in everybody's library who wants to be a leader. Yeah, someone just commented. He said, "Micro, micro is my hero, and the blue collar industry is not taken seriously enough." I, I totally agree. He said we should try to talk about trade school as often, if not more, than going to college. My son will have both options, but trade school is cheaper and is worth it. I've had kids that have done both, and I think it's it's very individual. I think don't go to college unless you know what you want to do. Exactly. Because if, if you come yeah. out with a four-year degree in, uh, you know, Latin studies, yeah. that's not going to get you a real job anywhere. I mean, you, right. you know, um, but if you go to a trade school and you learn how to fix air conditioning units or mm-hmm. electrical or do, uh, you know, any number of those types of things, those guys make 9500 bucks an hour. Right. 
Well, the, they do. Yeah. And here's the thing. All the people that here, we, we kind of have a generation where everybody wants to go to school so that they can sit at home from mm-hmm. their computer and work all day. Yeah. So, and, and to them, that's the idea of freedom. And, and I get it. Look, I own my own business and all this stuff because I, I like that freedom as well. But what's missing from that link, I can still like I can still like I installed my own TV. I built my own shelf over there. Right. All the decorating in here and the painting and all this. I've done a lot of this stuff myself. Right. And at home, too. So I'm not I'm not like helpless where I have to hire someone to do everything that I need. Right. Um, so it's it's just. I feel like it's important to it, consider it. And I think what you're talking about is having a well-balanced life. That's true. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, you know, it's nice to be able to do stuff and work from home. My wife and I both work from home. But you know what? After a while, you need to get out of the house. Absolutely. You do. I always look forward to, you know, going and, uh, you know, be with my clients or, or go grab a coffee with a potential new client and just get mm-hmm. out and meet new people and, and experience different things. And just to get out there and socialize, because I really think God made us to be social beings, not to be reclusive. Right. And some people go, and this is the worst enemy of us, is when we say, well, that's just my personality. That's just the way I am. Well, you know what? That was just the way I was as an introvert. And and it's like many, many people just, they have no aspirations. They don't want to move out of where they are. Mm -hmm. The world is all about them. And they don't really understand the whole point of you being here is to be a gift to the world. Right. And who we are. Un- unfortunately, we have a uh, we, we need to take a short break. So uh, we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. We got more great stuff on communicating versus versus dictating right after this. Uh, support right. those who support us. We'll be right back. Little Leapers and Knowledge Keepers Child Care and Preschool offers learning experiences that give kids a healthy sense of self and meaningful connections to the world around them. We teach children from a positive perspective so they learn healthy conflict resolution and develop character. Owner Jennifer Lever has over 28 years' experience in child development. She's helped children learn to read as young as 18 months. Join our happy place where we make happy happen. Located in Pennardville, bordering Bedford and Manchester. Call today at 603-491-1780. Hi, I'm Lori Lynn Green, Advancement Strategist and owner of AlphaAdvancementStrategies.com. I've been very successful at helping people overcome stressful situations to get immediate results in their personal and professional lives. At Alpha Advancement Strategies, we provide a non-judgmental and supportive environment, empowering clients to focus more on reaching their goals. You can find us on the web at alphaadvancementstrategies.com or call us at 603-860-9260. Alpha Advancement Strategies is where you invest in yourself. Hi, I'm Bob Bola, Chief Instructor of Defensive Strategies and Anchor of the Personal Safety Segment, where we talk about personal protection, situational awareness, and home defense. Tune in every Thursday at 9 a.m. and refuse to be a victim. Only on In It Together with Lori Lynn Green. midst of it's a wonderful life with mark major coach speaker executive director and all around nice guy but he's got a lot of wisdom and there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom knowledge is a head puffing up of pride and wisdom is knowing how to use what you know in the most effective way that adds value to others right and there's a difference between wisdom and being a wise ass. I've been both. But anyway, wisdom works a lot better. You mean a wisdom and a wise donkey. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, uh, I'm actually uh, researching through a book right now by uh, my hero, John Maxwell. And he talks about the difference between directing and connecting. Okay. And he says that directing is authoritative and talking down and working from the top down giving answers and it's all about my agenda when you're connecting with people it's more collaborative you're listening you're working side by side as opposed to top down you're empowering people and asking questions and it's about their agenda as well so that way they're you know both people are valued both people share they're both willing to listen 
And then they're able to adjust and settle on a game plan. And when both people take ownership of that game plan, it more than likely is going to get done because you're yes. eliminating resistance. Well, I want to clarify something because I know I know what you mean. But the part of here you say it's it's about their agenda as well. Well, actually, it depends. OK, for instance, we have a vision here for what we're doing here. Right. OK, and. Uh, you know, I was talking on Mon uh, Monday about how more than one vision is division. Right. So obviously the person that has the vision for the place is running the place mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, when you're talking about their agenda, it's now their agenda within the greater vision in, of, of maybe how that's going right. to play out. And how does that how does that fit in with the overall vision yeah, it has to of fit. what you're trying to do. Yeah, it exactly. has to fit. So it's not, it's not the same thing as so they get coming, their way. Right. Yeah. So it's a coming to the meeting of the minds. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is, too, is, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions of yourself either. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, what have I achieved? What have I done well? What, you know, what can I improve? Uh, what are my, the expectations of myself? Yeah. And what are the expectations of others? What happens a lot of times, there's a gap between sometimes what we expect of people and what they're really able to to, to accomplish with their right. knowledge and in their experience and so forth. And so that's why it's so valuable to get to connect and communicate with people to really find out where they're at. And so that we can get back to what we were saying earlier so that you can put people in the right positions for them to succeed. You're not looking right. to just hire people to fill a position. You want to hire the right people to fill that position. And, you know, maybe somebody that you're, you're interviewing with is awesome, but they're not going to quite fit that position. But maybe there's another position that they would fit into. So don't totally dismiss them. Right. Because they don't fit what you're trying to hire for, but they can still add value to your company in another in another way. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to I, I want us to make sure that we make room for comments. There's another comment mm -hmm. here says that um, I find my the more that I put myself in uncomfortable social social situations, the more comfy I get. In other words, this is talking about uh, stepping out to talk mm -hmm. to people and, and relate um, instead of living in your bubble. <laughs> It, I, I can, can tell practice. you, yeah, I mean, I can tell you from personal experience, I was painfully shy growing up and I ended up in, in sales. Well, and my father was like, <laughs> how in the heck did you end up in sales? He says, you couldn't lead in silent prayer growing up. You were so shy. And I said, well, you know, it's just something I worked on and overcame. And, and, um, you know, you have to put yourself in position sometime. And here's what I tell people. It might be uncomfortable, but if your vision and your goal and your dream are big enough, they'll draw, they'll draw you to them and you'll do the uncomfortable things that it takes to make them happen. And, and the other thing is uh, there's always a confusion about shyness and being introverted. Mm -hmm. And the confusion is that someone that's introverted is shy, but they're not. I, I was... I was introverted, which is just how I process things. It's just mm -hmm. the advantage of that is being a better listener, a better right. observer, and somebody who can learn and grow into uh, a position that you want. Right. And and it's like like you, uh, being on the radio or on live stream was probably the furthest thing. If anybody ever asked me if I wanted to do that, I would laugh and go, "Are you are you kidding me? <laughs> Absolutely right. not." Right. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of great ways if you want to connect with people, even outside of um, outside of the job or whatever, you know, go grab coffee, go grab lunch. Right. A lot of times when I'm uh, working with new clients or whatever, and it's like, oh, do you want to meet in an office? You know what? Meet me at Panera. Meet me at Dunkin's. Meet me at we'll grab a coffee. No pressure, no, because it, it, it puts you in a neutral atmosphere where the, it's just more comfortable for everybody. And if you want to really do, here, mm -hmm. here's the thing that works out well, too, is if you want to build a relationship with the people under you, sometimes simple stuff, you know, Friday afternoon, hey, let's order pizza. Let's have a nice lunch and let's, let's you know, kind of uh, you know, everybody talk, everybody socialize, everybody, and you get to know each other and you're actually building relationships, not just for a working relationship, but you're actually getting to know each other, etc. And that 
really can make a difference as well, can't it? Yeah, I, there's a few things going through my head right now, and I just <laughs> I feel like there's a there's some great there's some great things here. Uh, I was kind of looking at a, an article how to avoid managing like a dictator and value teamwork. And some of the points that the author of this makes, his name is Brady Nash. This was written in 2017. And um, really, he asks the question, what type of leader are you? There's four areas. He's like, what type of leader are you? Um, Keeping unity, the importance of keeping unity, Mm -hmm. uh, and then building up leadership skills in others. And and to me, this is where we, you and I, would probably agree that that means it may not cross a person's mind who owns an organization that they can hire someone to come in and talk to their people, Mm -hmm. uh, morale boosting, you know, just where they can, it's not a speech. It's not where you get somebody who's kind of funny and whatever about real life, but helps people to, you know, kind of give them some tools so that they can do this. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first one as far as what type of a leader are you is really, we talk about this all the time, how important it is to be self-aware. Right. What personality are you? And if, you know, we talk about Florence Littower's book, The right. uh, Personality Plus, which is a very simple form of, mm-hmm. you know, other personality ones. And and they're not all 100% foolproof, but they're a good beginning gauge to tell you where right. you're starting from, not who you are forever. Right. And, and I think a lot of people look at those and go, this is just how I am. No. We're all to be moved into, we all become more like God designed us to right. be. Well, you know, speaking on that point, mm-hmm. uh, I took a DISC assessment like four years ago uh, for a position I was doing on some leadership stuff in our church and just recently took another one a couple of months ago uh, that uh, now we're going to have the opportunity to become DISC certified to actually teach DISC uh, through the John Maxwell team. It changed a bit because right. I've grown over those four yes. years. In the you develop. Other, yeah. And the other thing to remember, somebody might be what they call a driver in one situation, you know, get it done, get it done, etc. But in another situation, they might be another, per, you know, another personality, depending, depending on, on what the situation, what the situation is. There's yeah. times where you need to lead and there's times where somebody has more experience and they're probably better qualified to lead than you are. And sometimes you got to let somebody else take the helm a little bit. Okay. And to me, this is, I'm so glad you brought it up because the next point I wanted to bring up is, is how do we have the wisdom to know the difference? This is where you and I very strongly believe in uh, the spiritual aspect Mm -hmm. of a relationship with God who gives us wisdom Mm -hmm. whenever we ask for it. And so we're not relying just on our own experiences and stuff. The difference, be, and I was telling someone this yesterday, you can have experiences, but they don't change the truth. But the truth can always change your experience. Right, exactly. And so I think it was yesterday with Jen, because the, 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 this is why I love that you pointed out, okay, I may be good in this arena, <laughs> but just because I'm here and good in this arena, we don't want to be arrogant and prideful and go into another area and think that we're in charge. I remember my younger days, I had that kind of a, until I grew up yeah. and matured. But when we talk about maturity, we talk about spiritual maturity and, and knowing the well, right times. And the places. wisdom to know the things that you are strong at. Right. And the things that you know that you're OK at, but somebody else can do a better job than you. And so, you know, sometimes you're going to be in charge of things. And sometimes it's good to submit to somebody else's uh, position as well. And this is where we go into the next one as far as keeping the unity goes. It's it's learning that we're keeping in mind that we want to serve the greater cause. What's the bigger mm-hmm. version? And if it means I'm cleaning the toilet this week or if it means I'm going to do a menial job that somebody else didn't show up for work mm-hmm. because it makes it better for all of us, then I'm going to do that. So it's about serving wh- wherever God has planted you. Right. You want to serve the greater good. It's, it's servant leadership. And, yeah. you know. We talk about listening and sometimes submitting to other people. You know, I always say listen well. Some of the best thoughts that I've had have been times when I've sat together with people that are, you know, maybe assistant managers or even department heads or even just sometimes the best knowledge you get is from the people that are actually on the front lines doing the work that's right and so i'll sit down with people and and so how do how do we solve this 
and listen to them because a you're going to get some great ideas and b they feel valued because you're listening to them and that gets everybody on the same page too and they're right. more likely to come in with the hey mark really values my work here and so i'm excited to come to work today not mm. you know nobody cares what i think etc so good, you know mark. so it's good for everybody it is. It is good, and and it makes me think about um, when you're listen. You're a better listener. Uh, in other words, whoever you have hired to put in different places, mm -hmm. you have to trust them to know their job and get their feedback so that you know how else are you going to know what your decisions are going to, what repercussions your decisions are going exactly. to have. Exactly. I worked in a company like that too. I was an administrator in a a school for about four years and. I had, there were other administrators. We mm -hmm. worked together and uh, I happened to be the one that kind of was all the way down from the customer all the way up to the board. I, I right. and So when they, I went to the board meetings, I was able to, when they were talking about something, they would always say, okay, not that they had to listen to me, right. but, but they said, well, what do you think about what we're saying? And I right. could say, well, I like the idea, except for it will affect this area here because mm -hmm. I knew the whole picture. Right, exactly. And so for them not to invite me into that conversation would have been very detrimental. They would have lost customers. Exactly. For sure. Exactly. No question about it. Yeah. Um, so the other last but not least, because we're almost out of time, was building up leadership skills in others. And that is what Mark said, starting off listening to them. Um, and then what we said before is offering that personal and professional development to your people. You know, my, Mark would be a great person if you have, you know, maybe a business and maybe you only got five or six or 10 or 20 or 30 people. Mark can come and he can, you know, you tell him what you feel like the problem might be and he can tailor his talk which right. you know he's got a sense of humor he's talking so it's not like this boring speech it's going to be you know he's going to engage your people. life's too short to have boring speeches <laughs> yeah he's going he's to engage your people in a way right. that's going to make them feel really good about moving to that next place and your people are going to be grateful for you doing that for them because they're going to feel like you did it for them right you know so. a lot of times i i read articles in, in companies in you know, they invest in equipment, they invest in buildings, they invest in stuff. But the least thing that that companies invest in is their people. And and your people are your best asset. Those machines don't mean a darn if your people aren't aren't working well. Yeah. And so you need to invest in them. Yeah. So one of the things that I believe Mark does is uh, he inspires, he teaches, encourages and even helps people. And because of that, mm -hmm. helps motivate people right. to want to do the right thing right um you know uh i i would say this the other the last thing the point mm -hmm. that i really wanted to make today in in all of this and take the time and i it can be every day and sometimes that's valuable to encourage people right let them know that they're valued and um you know never underestimate the value of letting your people know that you believe in them that's that's so powerful. That's so powerful because it, it, the whole world seems to be against us sometimes. Yeah. And, and how we hear all the negative, but how often do we hear someone say, hey, good job. Hey, you know what? I appreciate what you did. Right. I mean, I've had times when, um, you know, I people that I've taken over stores, like I mentioned earlier, and this goes back a few years, um, that people have come up to me and say, until you you know, took over the store and we had a couple of great, great conversations. I was ready to quit. Right. And because of you, I didn't quit. Right. And, you know, that's not to puff up, hey, how great Mark is. It's just to demonstrate that it makes such a difference that when you let people know you believe in them, that you value them. And, and that's what really uh, just people be a decent looking human for. being. <laughs> you know, the biggest thing that people lose, they quit their jobs over. It's not money. It's the fact that they don't feel like they're valued in their in their role. Right. Absolutely. Well, with that said, Mark, um, we got to close out. So why don't you give some contact information? Sure. They can reach me at 603-674-6818 or feel free to email me, mark, M-A-R-C dot major at comcast dot net. All right. So tomorrow, if you want to join us for personal safety, Bob Bollard will be here from Defensive Strategies, helping us to stay safe. Uh, have yourself a blessed day, and remember, we are in it together.